welcome to the Business Behind the Scene podcast with Francesca Moy, where we talk all about real business problems, real solutions, and getting actual results in your business. Hello, 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 welcome to episode number 166 of Business Behind the Scene. I just spent the best weekend ever going out to um, salsa parties on the beach, then dancing under the star, then, oh my gosh, I does so much, and then beach, beach tennis, I, my legs are literally throbbing from how much exercise I did during the weekend. Uh, and it used to be the other way around, I used to exercise a lot during the week and then not exercise in the weekend and take it easy, and now it's been the opposite, so I'm like, okay, I need to find a way to rest somehow of my body, so Monday is pretty much my day off of hard exercise, still did 10,000 steps every day, but um, that's every day. So yeah, so I just wanted to um, check in with you guys, how everything goes, oh my gosh, so much is happening. Uh, my friend and I are actually deciding to um, share office, we're deciding to share office, we're deciding to move, so I'm going to most likely leave this office and rent uh, and rent it out on Airbnb as a room, so turn this into a bedroom and um, yeah, get into another place and be able to work together. I do feel that my energy is way more um, fun and engaging and, and exciting when I am sharing the office with someone else, when I have things to talk about, rather than just be my, by myself. And this is why I've been looking for a co-working place for a while, I've been looking to invite people over here and work from here, but I think that actually this is gonna be the best solution ever. So I am really excited. I have been joining some really cool um, uh, networking groups in here in, in Australia. So you know what, in the next five months, watch out. Oh my gosh, watch out. I think we're gonna definitely be able to reach our goal of um, 50 clients in our venture sister agency and 50 clients in our academy. Um, we, we have already 70 clients, but 50 new people um, in the next um, it's five months. So it's truly, 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 truly exciting stuff. Um, all right, so today, what we're gonna talk about, I've been seeing so many, so many, so many business owners struggling with um, hiring and keeping good stuff. So I wanna talk about that today. I wanna talk about what does it take for you to be a good um, leader? What does it take for you to be a good boss? What does it take for you to retain staff? What does it take for us to really make sure that we work well together? Because I'm seeing that there is a lot of blaming on you know the virtual system wasn't good enough, they didn't do this, they didn't do that, or this happened and that happened. And we wanna make sure that we actually align ourselves with our team and become one rather than point fingers rather than be upset to each other. Um, virtual assistants are people. They are people and as everything, every role, um, people have emotions and so we need to make sure that we set the foundation from the beginning of when we're hiring someone. So we have a really huge process that we go through when we're hiring people. Um, and I'm gonna teach you, you can go and find your own people or you can come to us and we'll do it for you. Um, but one of the biggest things that I do when I hire people is I prefer to hire someone that has no experience. Because when I hire someone that has experience, they usually are busy looking for other jobs. They, they get other proposals, they get other offers, and they usually go with the best offer. They don't really stay, they're not loyal, they don't have that um, capability to just say no to other things because they're with you. So I prefer to hire people that have no experience and train them and mold them the way that I want someone to work for me in my business. I want to make sure that we have the same values, we have the same attitude about work and ethics, and I don't want someone that has too much experience and now all of a sudden they think that they are my boss. I don't want that. So when all, all the time, from the very beginning, I used to hire people only that were able to actually um, be trained, someone that is coachable, that's got a good attitude, and they are fast learners, right? Those are the most important things. Once I have those things, then I, I can actually train them, I can actually teach them stuff. So how do you know that someone is a fast learner? You can actually give them one small task for them to do, to see how they do it with a due date and a timeline, or when you want that done by, to see how that works. That's the one thing that I always used to do. Before I hire someone, 
you gotta pass the test if you don't pass the test then nothing is gonna happen we're not gonna work together and so I always do that then I ask them questions about their personal lives like I ask them questions about um, what do you do in the first thing in the morning right so I'm trying to understand what is the life let the day look like um, and if they say something then I'll be like okay so if you, you're doing all of these things how you told me that you can work with me from six o'clock in the morning what are you going to do for, with your routine with your kids or with your this with your that and that's when I can find how they handle some confrontation right they're like, some people are going to panic and now lie and tell me oh no no like I've, that won't be a problem I'll change everything it's like well tell me exactly how would that look like and so I want to put them on the spot to really try to understand what what they're going to say to me and I can see from the eyes I can see from the attitude right so I ask them some direct questions and I can see where they look when they say when they were looking for the answer when they're telling the truth versus when they are trying to make up but when they're put on the spot and they're trying to make up a story that's going to sound good rather than tell me the truth um, I always start with that I want to tell them that in my company in my um, agency in my company we do not uh, allow any lies whatsoever so if they are make a mistake if there's a problem if there is they're in trouble they're always going to be supported by us they're always going to have a job they're always going to be um, helped by us to find a solution if they lie they're gone immediately don't care no we don't have any uh, leniency for liars at all so even if it's a white lie even if it's a lie because you know or, or, or like hiding the truth that is still a lie to us so we say that at the beginning because it will help the virtual assistant to understand like if we can actually work together because if you can't be, be tell me the truth you can't say that you made a mistake if you can't put your hand up for you know a meeting that something is wrong that's, we're never going to work well together right so this is how I manage to truly set the foundation from the beginning and I have to prove them that right so I have to also back back my word so if something happened I cannot get angry at them and yell at them and be upset with them I need to go okay thank you so much for sharing with me thank you so much for telling me the truth thank you so much for coming to me with this mistake we're not gonna fix it together don't worry you're not in trouble let's do it so then I'm gonna ask you some questions now to understand why that happens so next time what happens so when you were doing that what were you thinking like what's you know why did you do, do think of this instead of that or why didn't you look at the procedure was it too time consuming it's okay don't have you're not in trouble I just wanted to understand so next time we can actually fix it right so we work together towards a solution and so that make sure that it doesn't happen and honestly every single one of my virtual assistants have been with me for years we do that from the beginning and they never lie to me they never make mistakes that you know just we do it together we fix things together they make mistakes but we actually take the process together so it's been amazing to be able to set that from the foundation from the get-go right so I want to tell them as well like my expectation is that you become better throughout the years not worse so I don't want you to be amazing the first months and then start to drop balls I want you to make sure that you create a system and procedure for yourself to make sure that you never drop the recurring task you got to do the recording task as a machine I want this to make sure that it is sustainable and you continue to do those for me so we got to work together and we're gonna help the virtual assistant to make sure that we are actually setting the foundation for them to stay long term with us and to grow within the company so when they're coming in we're onboarding the virtual assistant by showing them around in the business right like this is what we do this is how we help people and uh, have a look at this like if you have some recordings if you have some sessions if you have some content if you have some videos get them to spend like a few hours every day to really study who you are what you do and how um, how you run your business right um, as, a, as an agency we actually get the virtual assistant to do that before they get um, assigned to a client we're going to do some research get them to study what's been happening with that client and so that we can actually work very well together it's just so cool that every client is like oh my gosh I was so impressed with the virtual assistant knowing everything about my business I'm like yes that's exactly what we do so you want to make sure that you give the opportunity to your VA to study your business to understand who you are what you stand for the way you speak the way you communicate what you teach what you value what you what you love or you don't love right so all of those things needs to be the first few weeks especially it needs to go there now a lot of the times when people are like oh my gosh I just trained this virtual assistant and now all of a sudden they're not 
and you know, they're, they're going and now I wasted all this time. I never ever choose to believe that I waste my time, never. None of my time is ever wasted. There's always a learning with, that goes along with it. So even if I onboarded someone and things didn't work out, I have learned how to onboard someone. I've learned how to do things in a way and I'm thinking maybe next time I should do it this way. I have recorded probably some videos and I can use that for the next person. I maybe got to create some procedures while I was, uh, while I was onboarding someone and I can use them again. So it's never, like my rule is I always, always think I never waste my time. Never, like ever. I don't, I, why would I choose to think that, right? That, that's gonna make me feel awful. So I don't wanna feel awful. I wanna go like, yeah, it's okay, they can go. I've now learned a lot. I'm, I'm a better position than when I started. So that's totally fine, right? So we wanna make sure that we do that. We wanna make sure that we, um, we feel okay with ourselves. We trust ourselves that we're gonna make the right decisions and things are gonna happen for a reason, right? Not, nothing is ever worst, worst, wasted. So as I'm teaching, um, some of the tasks that I want to pass along. So I usually start with three, three things that I'm already doing in my business and I need to pass them. So I will say, okay, let's do the first thing. So this is what happens. When a client signs up with me, this is what I do. I go into here, I click here, I click there. So I do a video doing that task, right? Doing it, not teaching it, just doing it while I'm teaching it and while I'm recording it. So then I can actually share with the virtual assistant what I did, how I did it, and the virtual assistant can actually create a procedure out of that thing. Now, when the virtual assistant creates a procedure, some people will create a procedure that is not at our standards, and that is okay. What we're gonna do is that we're gonna book a call with them. I'm gonna say, okay, this is a procedure that I've done, and this is how I would like to see it next time. And so you're gonna edit it, you're gonna together, you're gonna show exactly how you would do it, and then you're gonna make sure that the virtual assistant make it pretty, and you know, we never waste time doing pretty stuff, the VAs do. And then we're gonna pass to task number two, right? Pass that task number two, and now we're gonna do a video. Now they know the way that you like procedures done, and so they're gonna go and do a procedure, come back to you, and now you're gonna watch them follow the procedure for the same task while you watch them. They're doing, they're doing it online with you. So if there's a mistake, you can stop it right there and then. And then once it's done, that means you, that task is now successfully been delegated. Until you've done all this process, I don't believe that a task was delegated correctly. So I'm gonna recap, you're gonna do a video, get your VA to create a procedure, then edit the procedure, and then pass on to a second task, and then do it with the virtual assistant, get her to create a procedure, and then the virtual assistant will do it while you watch it, and so that way you can either edit the procedure or correct any mistake, and then from there, the VA should have it. Right, so you have the whole process created, and now you're gonna be able to start to step in as a leader, step up as a leader, and be able to have work on the business, not in the business. Start to really, really think about, okay, this is what I'm gonna focus on, this is what I'm gonna focus at. Now, I've heard a lot of virtual assistants that working directly with clients, that they're asking for money in advance, they're asking for things in advance, they're asking for pay rises and stuff like that. You gotta decide that in advance. Right? You're going to decide in advance how you want to pay your virtual assistant, when you want to pay them, and when you want to give them a pay rise. Right? So I've got a, a yearly um, review that I do with my VAs, and I only pay them a pay rise on their review if they've done these things that I want them to do. Right? So you've got to make sure that you start to behave like a CEO, and you start to put things in place so that you can have a long-term relationship with your virtual assistant, and it's all built on trust. If you don't trust them, they're not going to trust you. Right? You've got to build that trust from the beginning and you've got to give yourself fully to this relationship. Right? It's, a, it's a relationship, it's a business relationship, but you've got to make sure that you open up and you understand that you've got to trust, you've got to lean in, you've got to let them go. But no, there's a difference between lead and micromanage. You don't want to micromanage. You don't want to be like, have a step of the way, like, you know, oh, let's do it together. Like, these are the steps. Like, you want the VA to actually create some steps for you, create, make some decisions for you. Like, not making decisions, but like saying, like, this is a problem and these are my three solutions, what do you think? I never wanna have a virtual assistant coming to me or anybody working for me coming to me with problems. I want them to come with me with the problem and three solutions to that problem already. So I can train my team to become a supervisor, to become a manager position, to be a better version of themselves so they can actually step in the business and help and support. Um, yeah, so we wanna make sure that we know how to transition from being a solopreneur and an entrepreneur. When we are a solopreneur, we just do everything, right? Oh, it's just faster if I just do it. But it's never ever faster if you just do it. It's always better for you to um, create a procedure, well, show a video 
and then create procedures from there. I don't, I'm not a fan of long videos. I mean, you can have a long videos, that's fine, but I prefer to jump on a call on a Zoom and just speak about it, just talk about it and just be on the same page. That will also create the relationship, the, the trust, the, um, you know, the camaraderie. Like you're now working together as a team and you get to catch up quite a lot. So I, I prefer doing it that way. Um, and this is how we delegate. So when you're delegating something, it's not just about I need this to be done. It's like it needs to be done. Let's divide it in different phases. Phase one needs to be done by this date. Phase two needs to be done by that day. Phase three needs to be done by that day. So now we have the whole project needs to be finished by that date. So now you have that. The virtual system will put all those dates in a calendar. And now together, you're going to have a meeting at the end of each phase to make sure that everything is going smoothly. And if the virtual assistant throughout the project has any problem, they're going to reach out to you and maybe have a quick 15-minute chat to talk about where they're stuck so that you can help them unstuck themselves so they can actually deliver each phase at the right time rather than go like, oh, I was stuck three weeks ago, but I didn't want to disturb you, so now nothing is done and now we're delayed everything. But we want to, again, teach the virtual assistant that that's what your expectations are and then you're going to be working together, right? Uh, another thing that I've noticed is that someone was like, oh, I've got a virtual assistant and... I want them to do a report every night um, and then they never done it. And I'm like, well, how long have they been working with you? Oh, three months. I'm like, why have they have never done it? And they're like, I don't know. I'm like, but why didn't you ask? Why didn't, didn't you do it? And not three months after, but like a day after. Hey, yesterday you didn't do your, your report. Hey, today you didn't do your report. What happened? Hey, this is what I'm expecting you to do. Hey, this is what you should be doing. So you have to... To, to, for, to, for you to help a virtual assistant to actually be consistent and get consistent results, you need to make sure that you stay on top of them until they have it, and then you let go. Then you stop being that active, right? But at the beginning, you need to make sure that they know, oh my goodness, if, I, if they ask me to do something and I don't do it, I actually, they will follow up. They will ask me, so I, I better do it, right? We need to make sure that we... Um, take responsibility of our own ownership, our own leadership, rather than just passing along things and just expecting them to be done. And if they're not done, it's like too bad. Yeah? Makes sense? All right, everybody. Thank you so much for listening. And I'll definitely see you on the next week. If you like this episode and if you want a virtual assistant, we can find them for you. We have an amazing virtual assistant in our business and we have um, another 20 spots left. And then we are sold out. How exciting is that? All right, everybody, thank you so much for listening and have a fabulous week and go and delegate successfully. All right, bye. Thank you so much for listening to this podcast. If you have enjoyed this podcast, then you're definitely going to love our Coaches 10K Kit. I have created this specifically for you to show you how to get your first 10K. This is an incredible bundle that I created when you get unlimited access, like literally lifetime access to two of my main courses where I show you exactly how to get to your 10K a month. You're going to absolutely love this. But on top of this, there is also a sneak peek inside of my sold out business academy. Seven days where you get to really try out and watch all the things that you can and really get the gist of what we do inside of that sold out business academy. This is priceless. I am so excited to have you joining this. I mean, it's only $197 at the moment. So please make sure that you, share, you check the description and the show notes to see if this offer is still available. But you guys need to go and come and check it out. Check the description for the link uh, and go and join our Coaches 10K kit. Thank you so much for listening. I'll see you in the next episode.